Is YSS underrated in Rise of Kingdoms? Let's find out in this video. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rise of Kingdom video. My name is Legend Ronnie and today I'm going to talk about YSS because oh boy did we had all these live streams or past live streams going on in the current KVKs that are happening right now where Zenobia and YSS in Garrison are just demolishing everything. So the question is, is really Zenobia that OP or is it YSS who is empowering Zenobia so much that they just destroy everything? I have even seen reports where Zenobia and YSS defending triple rallies and having positive trades on all three rallies. So going further into the video, I'm definitely going to show you a couple of reports that have been happening in Heroic Anthem and some of the reports might just shock you how powerful Zenobia and YSS together can be. But to answer the question, is really the Zenobia who is so powerful or is it YSS? My answer to that is that YSS is the commander that empowers Zenobia so much. Everyone sees Zenobia as the primary commander because she is the leading commander. Zenobia being as primary, she is infantry, so she has the specific specialization talent tree for infantry, so you can get a lot more points in attack, defense and health for your infantry using the infantry tree. Now YSS is being as a second in command because it just packs a ridiculously large amount of defense stats, defense option, and damage bonus option in the same time. It's like a one commander having everything that you need. So YSS has AOE, when he is in garrison, he hits up to three targets with his primary skill and also reduces their march speed a little bit. Not sure that makes a huge difference, but it does that as well. Then you have his second skill, which with a chance can give you another 20% defense bonus and 15% damage bonus. And this is all damage because it's not specified which type of damage it is. Then you have his third skill, which gives you a flat 30% defense. It's not condition. You just start with that. You have that all the time. And then when your troops go lower on the 50%, you also get a 20% damage bonus guaranteed. Then you get onto his 4 skill, which this skill is very juicy. You get a 20% attack increase all the time. And then with a 10% chance, you get a shield, which shields help a lot, reducing the amount of severely wounded or dead in a flag situation. Because that's what the shields do, they just absorb damage. So these 500 shields, as small as they are, they help a lot in a garrisoning situation. And while this shield lasts all for the duration of the 3 second, you also get 30% contract damage bonus. So that's a lot of damage increase as well. Then you go into his expertise, which says when troops led by this commander consist of two or more different unit types, they gain 20% increased attack and 20% defense. Now obviously Zenobia is a specific specialization commander, so it's not very common to do mix of troops with Zenobia. But if we look on a talent tree, for example, for infantry, because I don't have Zenobia unlocked, so I'm just picking a random commander. The only thing that would not work if you're doing mix of troops with Zenobia is hold the line. Because hold the line, it says, when the army led by this commander contains only infantry units, gives troops a 10% chance to reduce damage taken by 20% for the next two seconds after being attacked. Any other talents that you get from the infantry tree, they work with mix of troops. But when you hear the word mix of troops, does that mean that you have to put like anything in there, just drop every kind of troops that you don't need, archers, siege? No. So what players do when they send Zenobia and YSS in a garrison in order to do to get the mix of troops effect, they send with the march maybe 10,000 archers or 10,000 cavalry and rest is infantry and what players are filling the flag with it's also infantry everything else is infantry it's just a tiny bit of troops just so you can benefit and trigger 
the mix of troops effect from your YSS so you can benefit from the 20% attack and 20% defense. This is the reason why Zenobia and YSS are being so powerful in garrison situation because the amount of stats they both bring together in garrison is ridiculously high. On top of that, they both have a significant amount of damage. So Zenobia, with her 4 skill, it does 600 over 3 seconds, so that's almost a 1800 nuke. And YSS already showed it, he does 1400 and it's also considered an AoE, it can hit up to 3 targets. So if there is fighting happening, which is most likely happening most of the times around the flag, that you're also getting AoE value out of that. Then Zenobia has a healing factor and when you expertise her, you also get 50% health gain and 30% damage increase for 2 seconds with her primary skill. Now that is huge, because health reduces the amount of dead you get in the garrison and severely wounded, if there is severely wounded, because when you defend a for fortress or a flag, you get 25% of the troops in severely wounded, or when you defend a pass, it's only half of the troops that die and half go in severely wounded. So this is what health helps you. That's 50%, that's huge health gain, even though it's only for 2 seconds. But then you go on to her second skill and you get normal attack damage reduction and normal attack damage bonus. This is huge from one commander. There is no other garrison commander that does both. I mean, increasing your normal attack and also reducing the normal attack that you receive. On her third skill, you get infantry health and infantry attack. Again, flat stats that you get on your infantry, just flat bonuses. And damage to right army increased by another 10%. So that's so much damage and stats packed together with Zenobia and YSS. This is why they are being so powerful and so OP in Garrison right now. And I already showed you the 4 skill and the expertise. So honestly, my opinion so far before we're gonna get into the reports is that YSS is really underrated in Rise of Kingdoms. I think he's a top-notch commander in garrison i have done a couple of videos where players defended with uh, yss in their cities obviously having a ridiculous amount of infantry troops as well which definitely helped but using just charles martellers primary and yss so again cards on the top regarding those videos if you're interested in just to see how powerful yss is and for example, another thing in our KVK, in our last KVK, Heroic Anthem, we defended Fortress with YSS primary and Theodora as a second because we were doing mix. We were building a fortress and we wanted to defend it and keep it up. And it was kind of hard to just put infantry in there to like keep a Zenobia, right? So we should just done mix. YSS and Theodora, I think they just work the best when it comes to mix. And we had positive trades on every single rally. And I'm pretty sure and I'm 100% sure it wasn't because of Theodora. It was because of YSS and how many stats he can pack together for a mix of troops. Even for a city, YSS and Theodora is one of the best marchers that you can have for your city. It's not Zenobia. Zenobia is good to have and obviously helps you. And especially if you have majority of infantry in your city. But if you're having mix of troops or even numbers in of troops in your city, then YSS primary and Theodora the second for your city. It's the best combo to defend your city with. So this is the first rally that was hitting the flag. So BQQM was defending with Zenobia and YSS. This is the second rally that was hitting the same flag. And this is the third rally that was, was hitting the same flag. And as far as I was told, or the player who sent me this picture, he said that they were also swarming the flag in the same time. So how crazy can that be that Zenobia and YSS can hold a flag against Triple Rally and Swarm? This is a... I'm not sure if the wording is correct, but is it right? Reverse psychology? Because we had Attila and Takeda who was able to rally flags, take counter rallies and swarms and still survive and have good trades. And now we have Zenobia and YSS that does the same on the garrison, on the rallies. So Anyway, it's a reverse thing. I'm not sure if that's the correct wording, but you get what I'm trying to say. I'm still shocked about that. 
honestly. I'm still shocked. I'm not sure if YS says because I already showed him that he hits up to three targets. I'm not sure if they were so unlucky with the positioning of the rallies and YSS was actually hitting all three rallies. Maybe that's why uh, they had such uh, good trades versus the rallies. It might be the thing. I wasn't there to record or actually see what happened. I was only able to see the reports. So this can also help you if you're getting double or triple rally. The way the rallies are positioned, if you're hitting all three of them, because it can be a plus by just AOEing them every single time you're doing skill with your YSS. This is Zenobia and YSG. I don't think that Zenobia is the one that is really that OP. I mean, you can tell from uh, this report that the trades weren't in favor of the garrison and it was a Zenobia in garrison. Going on to the truth buff, both had the same support skill, so you cannot blame the support skill on this one because they are in uh, Heroic Anthem, so they are not in Strife of the Eight. Obviously, they won as a garrison, they won because they used YSG, so on the trades, they obviously won because they had so many small deads, and if I just scroll up, you can see how many people were hit by YSG. So that's a ridiculously large amount of players that were hit by YSG. But point being, if even if there wasn't any AOE, the rally won on this situation. If that would have been a YSS in Garrison, I can guarantee you and 100% tell you that it would have been a total different report. And here we have a very nice and long report with a Zenobia and YSS in Garrison. And I believe that you can tell by the line going up and down. This rally has been gone for a while. Means at some point the reinforcements weren't doing very well for uh, this flag but look at that 7.2 million dead for the flag and 8.1 million dead for the rally the severely wounded would have been dead so if the flag would have taken 100% dead as well then obviously the rally won but what people care about and what a lot of people check they don't just check the power but they check the dead troops so the moment the rally had more dead than the garrison they don't say that it was a successful rally but in theory this was a successful rally because it's also 2.1 million severely wounded if this would have been dead then obviously the flag would have lost but it's also the small aoe's from the yss or the people that were trying to swarm <laughs> for that matter so again the garrison won on this situation as dead troops wise because it's just those three targets that YSS can hit but it's just causing a lot of dead troops which they pile up on a one hour rally there you have it the support skill are horrible whoever was uh, defending with the Zenobia and YSS and by judging by the troops buff you can see that a Guan Yu and Harald they have more infantry defense than a Zenobia and YSS so there's something is very wrong with the Zenobia and YSS and still performed very well. If you go into the all damage further down, you see that it's plus zero, skill damage plus zero, counter attack damage plus zero. So this player who is defending, he has a very low equipment and stats as the Zenobia YSS, and they still won on the dead troops on the trades. Imagine if he would have had the master strategist and he would have had the counter attack then I think that that Guan Harald would have not looked so well in this report. 2 million Archer dead versus 590,000 dead. This is definitely not something you want to do. You want to make sure that you always cancel the rally if they go bad. You can tell by the health bars, depending which health bar goes down faster, either the rallies or the garrison. And if the garrison is still on Y, while you're going drastically low on yellow then you want to cancel the rally it's no problem the rally can be relaunched but just don't take this uh, this bad trades you know you want to you want to learn from these kind of things going on to the troops buff Ramses and Tomiris he did ha put the martyrs counter-attack I just don't think that archers do so much counter-attack or benefit so much from the counter-attack and the garrison didn't even have the counter-attack from uh, Charles Martel but the stats are looking very nice. Attack, defense, and health on the garrison. Compared to the archers, yes, definitely looking really great.
stats wise and the dead troops also talk the Nobia NY says again in garrison this was a very short rally and you can see the devastating reports Ramses and YSG didn't perform very well at all. Zenobia and YSS did some crazy damages to that rally. And very nice stats on this Zenobia and YSS. 205% infantry defense, 1.6% infantry health. Definitely looking great. And here we have a Zenobia and Theodora. Because I was uh, mentioning that it's not Zenobia that is the powerful commander is why says that empowers Zenobia so much even though Zenobia is really great on her own as well is this is positive trades but I wouldn't say that this was a bad rally because it's almost it's like what 80 80 thousand difference on the dead troops and still perform pretty well Zenobia and Theodora the reason they put Theodora is because of the AoE if there is a lot of fights under the flag then you want to put a Theodora if you have it available, if not, maybe even a YSG, it would definitely help out on all this small dead, which obviously just brings value for the garrison. All these AOE dead troops that you get, people fighting under the flag or next to the flag, and so on. Equipment plays a very important role as well, so it all depends who's rallying, who's garrisoning, are they VIP 17, they have the right equipment, they have the right support skill, and all the other stuff. So, for example, on this report, it was Edward and Artemisia, and apparently it did some amazing job. Obviously, the flag went down. And this is a very painful rally to see Guan and Leonidas, and most likely very good equipment on this Leonidas. I can tell you that for sure. 215% attack, 154 defense, 70 health. No support skill. That's not looking great. So there was probably a rushed rally where the garrison is looking very good on the stats. And there it is, the results, double the dead. Saladin and Wu in garrison. <laughs> this is kind of a troll garrison, if you want to ask me. And still doing amazing against Cyrus and Ramses. Even that is no support skill on that Saladin and Wu and still doing great. So there you have it, Saladin and Wu is just... Another combo that works against a lot of skill damage. Zenobia and Wu in garrison against Archer. 300,000 dead versus 453,000 dead uh, with a very nice support skill. A Martial's counterattack and uh, Sansu's master strategist. Obviously, the rally had very good uh, support skill as well. I mean, whatever is available right now in their KVK. But the flag was also swarmed a little bit and it's very painful to swarm a Wu with Martel's counterattack as well because Wu with her expertise has counterattack damage bonus and then you have the Martel's counterattack damage bonus so it's very devastating to swarm a flag but the flag was not very well reinforced you can tell by the amount of remaining troops when people are swarming so it wasn't properly reinforced so that's why I believe people were swarming but still even Zenobia with Wu is doing very good against a lot of skill damage. So I believe you can tell from many of the reports when it was YSS in garrison and when it was other commanders in garrison that YSS was empowering Zenobia so much. Like the dead troops, the rallies were having when it was YSS in garrison, it was tremendously high. This is what I'm trying to point out. So Zenobia on her own is also doing very good. I mean, I've showed you reports with Wu Zetian, with Theodora. It's also getting positive trades versus the rally plus the AOE value. But when it's with YSS, it's like completely demolishing everything. So I hope you find this video very helpful. And maybe you agree that YSS is the one that is the OP commander and maybe not Zenobia. But hey, if you think that is Zenobia, then definitely go for her. I still think that YSS is the man. And I'm also probably thinking to maxing him, to be honest. I've been a little bit hyped right now about him. And to tell you something very nice that I just heard tonight about this idea... And I'm, I'm starting to have thoughts about it. Even if you don't use YSS in Garrison, so pay attention to that. If you have a Max Trajan, like I do, you can do Trajan and YSS on the field. 
obviously with mix of troops, right? So you can benefit from the stats from YSS. So what happens if you put YSS second to Trajan? You get a freaking 2000 nuke, which is being boosted by 30% skill damage because that's what Trajan does with his primary skill. It just gives you a 30% skill damage increase and then you get YSS hitting with a 2000 nuke. So I think that can be a very interesting pair to do. So Trajan is very defensive focused as well. And then you add another 30% defense from YSS. And then obviously you do mix of troops. And then you get another 20% defense. So how crazy defensive can a Trajan and YSS be on the field, right? On the field as well. So that's also something that I'm having in mind or something that you might have in mind as well. Because right now is this Trajan thing going on. Um, everyone is so hyped about Trajan and YSS as well. Is mix of troops having a comeback in Rise of Kingdoms, ladies and gentlemen? That's a very high chance. Until next time, this is your boy Geroni signing off. Peace out, here and take care. See you in the next one and stay safe out there, my friends.